The process of handling all incidents throughout their life cycle, from when they are first reported to when they are either resolved or nothing more can be done in relation to them, is known as incident management. Incidents are raised over the phone, over emails, and through web-based and event management tools. The purpose of incident management is to help restore service operations to normal as soon as possible, to minimize adverse impacts on business operations, and ensure the best possible service quality and availability. The primary objective of incident management is to standardize methods and procedures used for the efficient and prompt response of IT services. Incident management increases the visibility of incident communication to business and IT support staff. In addition, it aligns incident management activities and priorities with those of the business. The scope of incident management is to manage any disruption or potential disruption to live IT services. It also includes events identified directly by users through the service desk, identified through an interface between the event management and incident management tools, and those reported or logged by technical staff. Value Incident management adds a lot of value to business. It lowers business downtime, which in turn leads to higher availability of the services. It allows the business to better identify priorities and dynamically allocate resources as required. Let us look at an example illustrating the importance of incident management in the next screen. Let us understand this with a scenario. Imagine an IT service provider without an incident management plan in place, only IT support staff. In the absence of incident management, issues are handled on a first-come, first-served basis. This means if there are 10 issues related to printing, the IT support staff are occupied with resolving those issues. At this time, if a major business service becomes unavailable, there is no IT support available to respond. On the other hand, if the IT service provider uses incident management, printer calls will be prioritized low and fewer resources will be allocated to resolving them. This ensures that if a high-priority incident occurs, focus can be shifted immediately to resolve the high-priority incident and manage printer users with minimum resources. Another way incident management adds value to a business is by increasing the ability to identify potential improvements to services. Next, let us discuss the basic concepts of incident management. Some of the basic concepts of incident management are timescales, incident models, and major incidents. The objective of incident management is to restore services as soon as possible. It is important to decide the timescales for incident resolution. The business defines the timescales while setting up a service. To commit to such timescales, the service provider and the customer must agree and document it in the service level agreements. Timescales depend on the defined incident priority and are documented in the operational level agreements and underpinning contracts or UCs. Service management tools are used to automate timescales and escalate the incident as required based on a set of predefined rules. When an incident occurs for the first time and has a major impact, a procedure is set up so that any future recurrence can be handled effectively. This procedure is now called an incident model. A major incident is a break in service which threatens to cause or is causing loss to the business. If not given immediate attention, the major incident may even lead to huge loss. The loss could be financial or in terms of brand image. A separate procedure with shorter timescales and greater urgency is used for major incidents. In the next screen, let us discuss the incident management process flow. The incident management process flow is described as follows. Identification. Here, the incident is detected or reported through event management. Alternatively, the impacted user registers it through a web interface, over a phone call, or through email. Registration. Here, the incident is logged and a record is created. Incident categorization. The registered incident is categorized according to type, status, impact, urgency, or SLA. 
if the issue reported is not an incident but a request from the user or a change proposal, it is handled according to the request fulfillment process. Prioritization Once the incident has been categorized, it is assigned a prioritization code, which indicates the handling procedure to use. Incident priority is decided based on the impact and urgency of the issue. Functional escalation. After prioritization, an initial diagnosis is carried out to discover all the symptoms of the incident. If the service desk cannot resolve the incident, it is escalated for further support in a process called functional or horizontal escalation. Functional escalation is based on knowledge or expertise. Hierarchical escalation. If the nature of the incidents is more serious, the appropriate IT managers are notified. This is called as hierarchical or vertical escalation. Vertical escalation is used when the existing resolution of an incident is not satisfactory to the end user. Investigation. If no escalation is required and there is no known solution, the incident is investigated for a new solution. This type of investigation can also occur in a functional escalation. Resolved. On finding the solution, it is applied to resolve the issue. Closed. If the incident is fully resolved, the service recovers to a fully functional level and the incident is closed. Let us look at an example illustrating the incident management process flow in the next screen. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.